goes on to our next discussion. The federal government is set to probe past heads of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency and, of course, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board over poor remittance of funds to the Consolidated Revenue Fund. State House correspondent Taya Modu has that report and he tells us what really is going on. Mm. Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board has so far this year remitted about 5 billion naira to the coffers of the federal government and is poised to remit a further 3 billion naira before the end of the year. It has called to question past remittances not only of JAMP but other revenue generating agencies which had been nothing to write home about. The Federal Executive Council is determined to take this further by ordering a probe of past heads of revenue generating agencies that have come under scrutiny. The highest amount that JAM has ever remitted into the Consolidated Revenue Fund before this management was 3 million naira. This year, they, so far, they have done 5 billion. And the Minister of Education reported that they have an additional 3 billion that they're ready to remit, which will take this year's figure alone to 8 billion. Now, they have not increased their charges, they have not increased their fees. So the question that FEC and council members were asking is, where was all this money before? So the directive was given that we must call those who were the heads of those agencies and similar ones to account. And that's the direction that we've been given and that's what we intend to do. These are measures to further plug leakages and shore up revenue as the federal government looks to ensure full implementation of the economic recovery and growth plan with the country's exit from recession. Government admits that the country's economy is not yet growing at a pace that would impact on its people, but there has been relative improvement in the agricultural and manufacturing sectors. You know, the Very. first time I read that report, I thought I mis misread the figures. <laughs> when I saw M and then B, I was like, this you is You had not to go just back again <laughs> to read, read and read. Wow. But these this are, this revelations are really mind-boggling, I must say. Indeed. All right, we have joining us now uh, mm -hmm. a social commentator, Biodun Shoumi. Mm -hmm. uh, he's here with us in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, let me ask you personally, <laughs> when you heard that report and you read it, were you shocked? Were you surprised? In relation to Nemasa, no. Okay. In relation to Jam, I was shocked. Okay. You know, I couldn't just believe that after leaking in, you know, billions over the years, you know, from candidates, particularly poor candidates from poor, you know, um, families, and then uh, the money find it, uh, find their way into people's pockets or somehow disappeared. Mm. You know, quite very shocking in relation to Jam. Because that's the process. Wahek is no more. You know, GC is no more the minimum requirement. You know, you have to go through the jam in, out in order to gain education. So what do you intend to educate the people? Mm -hmm. You know, the students, uh, you were already breathing corruption right from jam uh, level. Uh, it's quite very shocking. Well, Nemasa, we all know Nemasa is a cash cow, um, but has not been able to live up to expectations. Um, it's, uh, the money has been filtered in through numerous contracts culture within that agency. If you will recall, about um, three years ago or four years ago, uh, Nimasa had to subcontract, you know, the, the maritime services, a part of the maritime services to Tompolo, you know, to a company owned by mm -hmm. Tompolo. Indeed. And uh, for billions of um, naira. So uh, we all know the conduit pipe uh, for, for siphoning money from Nimasa. What this government is doing is uh, now we are now all aware of the scale of the problem in the country in relation to government agencies, you know, and uh, we need to plug those loopholes. All right, who would you blame really for this uh, mind boggling uh, revelation and the corruption that, that took place in those two agencies, uh, the past uh, heads of the agencies or the system that allowed them to make such uh, illegal money? Yeah, if you go back, we need to go back a little bit to understand the, the, the problem. Um, we have um, multiples of agencies in the country. Uh, many of them are quangos, you know, job for the boys. And where you have multiple agencies with multiple accounts, then you are bound to have things like that happening. So that has not allowed for effective um, monitoring of all these agencies. Some of those agencies were almost, almost on their own, you know, literally. So uh, they have their home board and whatever they agree to do or remit to the government is what they've been doing. That is why the uh, Steve Orosaye 
panel was set up, you know, to, to look at it. And I think it recommended, you know, you know, ab abolishing 38 agencies, which we have not till now, mm -hmm. uh, that 52 should be matched, and then about 14 should be, you know, reabsorbed under the ministries. Because we have created multiple functions, and we kept on budgeting money for all these agencies. So because we've been doing that, we have multiple accounts, so people are able to pay revenue due to government to other accounts, and one way Which or the other, they've been not able to. Know. Mm -hmm. Precisely, mm -hmm. and government, you know, all the, both federal and state governments were not even aware of what was going on in relation to the revenue. What the TSA, you know, has done, at least one positive thing the TSA has done now, is to bring all the revenue together. So it's not surprising that uh, a little over a year after the TSA, we've been able to see the scale of the problem yeah. because now even JAM has no choice but to pay the money to government exactly. because it's revenue. So uh, that is one positive thing about the TSA. So uh, we still need to look at those agencies, you know, and rationalize them. Why do you have uh, NECO, you know, and WAHEC? It just does not make sense. When you have multiple agencies, you are bound, apart from having huge overhead costs, you are bound to have some of these slippages, which we are beginning, you know, are beginning to come out. Uh, yes, government is right to say, look, we have to look into it. We need to understand what has been going on in the past and we need to hold people to account, uh, which is good. But I doubt if we'll make so much progress wow. about the past, because a lot of things happen in this country. We've seen people going to Central Bank, yeah. you know, just on directive of a past president, and then they would draw money. Some of these uh, money we're talking about, there are po political leaders in the past that would simply call the agency, we need social amount of money to fund the party or to fund so, and that's how some of those money, you know, we lost them. Mm -hmm. The rest went into people's pocket. So I would think that government is even better advice, you know, to focus on tightening up on the system rather than investing so much energy in the past. We will always get stuck when it comes to going back. How far back will you go? But if you don't look at uh, uh, the past and the, on how you fell, how would you be able to do better in the future? Yeah, precisely. We need to look at the past. We have done that. We've seen the scale of the problem. Now, in terms of probing and trying to hold heads of agencies, you know, accountable, some of them are no longer alive. Some, you know, the Nigerian system, we have a culture where politicians or political leaders will phone an agency and request for funds. We've seen that. That Look, the CBM was literally turned in, into ATM just couple of years ago. So these are very fresh in mind. Who do you probe? Do you arrest the CBN governor, the director of banking supervision, or who? Yeah. That is the problem which we have in the country currently. So when you look at all those issues, without look at a, a case in point. Matthew uh, said the president, the former president gave instructions to him to uh, perform certain things. And we've not been able to hold the former president to account. So all what they need to do is, yeah, I acted on the instruction of the president. Mm. So well, where, where, where do you start, where do you end? You know, at this point in time, we've been able to block it. We need to hold people to account. That is where we have the evidence. How far back, how much resources will you invest mm. into how many years backwards? We've had so many agencies. You cannot just say in the last uh, five years, people, some people raise the issue, why not go as far back as 10 years? Mm -hmm. Or even 20. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Of the agency. Yeah, <laughs> so rather than government not. wasting, you know, enormous time, enormous resources, you know, trying to probe. If you don't have the evidence easily available, instead of wasting so much time and resources, we should simply tighten up. But where we have evidence, then people should be held to account. Mm -hmm. All right, but we, we know that, uh, from at least reports we get tell that auditors are sent to the accounts of these agencies every year mm -hmm. and so on. But is, is, is government, apart from corruption, is government really overwhelmed with the ability to monitor and check the outcome of these audits from these agencies year, year after year? Absolutely. By law, the auditor general, the, like the country has an auditor general created by law. Uh, they are bound to inspect the books and make sure things are okay. But that's as far as it goes. It's not just the responsibility of the auditors. We also have oversight agencies, mm. you know, like um, um, committees in the National Assembly. They are also responsible, you know, for some of these um, oversight functions, ensuring that public resources are being, 
accounted for. So those, it, those um, oversight committees also failed the nation. Mm. Just like the auditor can only pick so much, pick up so much based on you know papers being submitted to them and being checked. But it is mind boggling that um, auditors, past auditors, will not have picked up this issue in relation to uh, jam because all you need to do is to compute the figures and. One of the things JAM did is to contract out the registration process, mm -hmm. which has created another problem of multiple registration because it takes weeks before candidates you know, can easily get registered. Rather than streamlining those functions, you know, they didn't do that. Rather than making it easy you know, for candidates to easily register, we have created a system that is now yielding so much money. But how come the auditors can't you know, uh, pick that up? Because mm -hmm. all you need to do is how many candidates actually registered with uh, JAM, then you can compute the figures. But that's mind-boggling. What about the committees in National Assembly? How come they fail to pick it up? That is why we, are, we have a problem. How far backwards will you go? You know, who are you going to hold mm. responsible? The heads of the agencies? What about those who are supposed to carry out oversight functions? What about the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation? So. These are all uh, major issues yeah. which we yeah. need to... But don't you think that this is even the more reason uh, why the federal government has to investigate, if not for anything, at least to know how uh, all of these uh, was able to be buried uh, under the carpet for so long, how it got from one office of the organization where money was, uh, was got, to, and then the different organizations that were supposed to be able to uh, notice, uh, you know, the siphoning of funds, but said nothing about it. But from what we've seen so far, it seems that there were templates in different organizations, templates set that regardless of who was in charge, whoever got back to the office had something to work with easily and was able to get money free of charge into his pocket. Yes, absolutely. Part of the problem is also the federal government itself. I'm not saying particularly this government, mm -hmm. our budgeting process. When you have a roll-in, roll-on budget where a, an, a, a funds allocated to a particular agency is only increased in percentage terms, not revealed, mm -hmm. nobody is taking account of the revenue coming to that agency, is also part of the problem because most of these agencies, you know, they have revenue, but those revenues are not utilized in the budget. Rather, we just appropriate, we just you know, increase the percentage of uh, last year's budget and just add it on. It's part of the problem. The fact of the matter is we need to hold people to account. But how do you do that? This government has less than two years you know, to stay in office. We are plugging loopholes. Already they have discovered massive you know, uh, revenue mm. that we've been able to uh, retrieve. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if we are to go backwards, how far backwards, that is one. Number two, to hold all those people accountable. Government can only hold you know, those uh, former employees or former appointees accountable. What about National Assembly? Who is going to mm. hold mm. the committees re responsible for oversight functions? Mm. You know, which, uh, accountable. Which they didn't carry out th which properly. <laughs> they either failed to carry it out or in the process, they benefited from it. We have had so many cases in the past. You remember the case of um, um, Iyabo Obasanjo, you know, you know, all these uh, funds being taken from agencies for oversight functions, you know, for foreign trips and all that. Uh, you, you remember the case of um, uh, the former Minister of Health, Professor Grange. I must say that she was found innocent, mm. you know, after trial. Uh, but the fact of the matter is we know that funds are moving from agencies to committee. So who or will bribes look that into were that? even solicited mm. in the past. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. And the National Assembly will insist that the federal government, the executive does not have the right to, to meddle probe, in that. Yeah. So how far will we be able to unravel All what right. has happened? Let me bring in Foladele fast to give us a, just a, a brief uh, a reaction. What people are saying on social media Welcome before we go. Back. We have just a few <laughs> minutes before oh, the news yeah. update. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Yeah. Ajayi Taiwo says, I have always said it, I'm still looking forward to who will best take over after PMB. I wish his health can take him beyond 2019. A lot of work to do. Chizim says, oh wow, cool story. I'm mostly thinking of how many private businesses have been overly taxed for this whopping sum. And it keeps probing. Adejuan says, can you imagine Jam only remitting 3 million Naira yearly for the past eight years? How Nigerians underdeveloped Nigeria? Hmm. <laughs> 
okay? Muda says, that's one of the change we voted for. And last one here from Babalala, he says, Jam, you too, there is Godo. <laughs> so that Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There are a lot wow. of people. Now, b before I let you go, I is it time for the government to start looking into other agencies, similar agencies like NECO or even the universities? So much money is made within the system that the government is not, is not uh, really, uh, is, being, is not remitted to government. Mm. Yes, um, absolutely. We are faced with a major problem. Mm -hmm. The government needs to do the needful. First thing is to rationalize the agencies. They should go back and look at Stephen Rossi's uh, report. Mm -hmm. We have so many multiple agencies, you know, doing the same thing. You have NCC, NBC, both mm -hmm. of them are allocating, you know, frequencies, one for communication, the other for broadcast. Mm -hmm. Do you really need that? Can't one be a department under the other? So if you create multiple agencies, you are bound to have multiple problems. Mm -hmm. So we need a situation where we need to rationalize those agencies first to reduce cost of governance. Two, it will also enable us to be able to properly monitor these agencies. The examples of JAM particularly, you know, tells a lot about what is going on in many of the government agencies. Almost many, all those agencies are revenue you know, generating, but what is happening to those revenue? No one knows. So mm -hmm. it is time for government to sit back. Do we need these multiple agencies? Why can't we rationalize? And then be able to properly monitor these agencies. Then we need to end the culture, you know, of rolling budget, whereby when, if you allocate two billion to this agency this year, you won't take account of the revenue made by that mm -hmm. agency. You simply you know, had a percentage increase mm -hmm. to the same budget and roll it over to the next year. And roll it on to the next year. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at our budgeting process. All also. right. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Biodun Shoumi, public affairs commentator, you for much. your analysis uh, on you. this dark rain uh, revelation against the jump and, of course, Limassa. Thank, Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.